everyone. Tyler and Gabe here from Seven Figure Entrepreneur. Today we have a special guest for you. This is actually a man I've known for a long time now. And uh, we've actually been trying to get him on the, uh, on the podcast for a while, but his travel schedule is actually worse than mine. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you guys to Ross Andrew Paquette. What's up, Ross? Yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. What's going Absolutely. on, man? We have, we have been trying to schedule this one for a while now and just tactical issue after te- tactical issue after technical mm-hmm. issue. Uh, yeah, between <laughs> my travel schedule and Ross's, which is yeah. even worse. It's and, now, and now today in my building, they're doing the fire alarm testing. So if I just like randomly mute, like, sorry guys, but this is the reality we're in. <laughs> but now Ross, thanks for being on, man. Um, just to give people a kind of an idea, how many countries have you been to this year so far? To be honest, not that many. I actually go to pretty much the same ones. Um, but this year so far, I think only like five or six. I don't yeah. know if that's a lot. Probably not. But um, yeah, I'm a creature of habit. So I, I hit up the same places all the time. I, I don't like to venture out too far. I nice. actually, you know, it's funny. We were talking about this last night. I haven't even been to Asia before. I've really been ever? to India, which I don't, I, I consider India to be its own continent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, never been to Asia. So hopefully Damn. this year that'll be on the list. Where do you think lots go? coming up. Where do you yeah, think no you'll doubt. go in uh, Asia if you go? I think it'd be Japan first and mm. foremost. Or, you know, Japan or Bali or something like that. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Not that Japan and Bali are in any way similar. No. Uh, I'd say Bali for the holiday aspects and Japan for the food and just culture and stuff like that. I've always wanted to go. Skiing. Yeah, that's, that's Japan yeah, that's powder, cool. man. I hear it's yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I told you this yesterday, actually, I, I uh, used to be a professional skier as well. So I've, I've got to get back out or yeah, back out there, out there again. Yeah. 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 You're just a man I've of many trades. Four years though. Yeah. Yeah. What, Technology skiing. Yeah. yeah. What kind of, what kind of skiing did you do? Uh, downhill. So racing. Downhill. So I raced nice. yeah, uh, slalom and giant slalom for the most part. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you're basically like a, a tech Ewan Olsen. Yeah, 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 kind of actually. Funny enough, uh, my girlfriend is actually really close friends with him. So, oh no uh, way! Yeah, we're, we're we're hopefully we'll be doing some something similar, maybe a little less uh, extravagant, but um, yeah, something similar to to his podcast and stuff. Oh, That's his awesome. blog and stuff. You're gonna go that route? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what? I get a lot of requests for that. Um, yeah, I've only in the last year, you know, posted more on Instagram. Never video. Like I'm not big on video. Yeah, I should probably should be. But, um, I, you know, I found it really, maybe not so much like the extravagant stuff that he does, but he, he does some really cool, you know, just like, you know, some of the philanthropic aspects and just kind of mm-hmm. opening people to his personal life. I think that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's something that um, in the tech space in particular isn't done, you know, enough yeah. today. So. And he's built like a really solid yeah. brand out of it, man. Like I got to oh, say, like, sure, I, yeah. I, wa- I watch quite a few car vloggers and stuff. Um, yeah. And I think that his is probably top tier in terms of lifestyle yeah. and combining the cars. Um, yeah. And, and I yeah. like the des- des- design aspect of everything too. He's always yeah. doing pretty cool designs on homes. Yeah. And cars. He, he's been doing that for a long time. Like actually, um, I, I remember seeing some of his videos with like his uh, Audi RS6 or something like that, yeah. like almost 10 years ago kind of thing. Wow. And, yeah. and, and obviously he's escalated that. Actually, no, I think it was, maybe it wasn't 10 years ago, but maybe eight years ago. And he, he was driving like an Audi R8 in the snow. Yeah. Roof, like a ski ride on top. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's just like. He, he started the, he started the like, yeah. um, the ski box on supercar things, right? Like he, I think his yeah, first yeah. car was a, a Gallardo and it had a, a ski yeah, box on it. had it, a roof so. rack. Yeah. That was yeah. the same one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. Sounds that's necessary. Hilarious. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, yeah, I want to see that. I'm actually hyped yeah. for your, your uh, <laughs> yeah. vlog now. So. Yeah, I so get really I, weird though. I'm like uh, Ricky Bobby when he's doing that interview. I start to like hold my hands in front of the camera when I'm talking. Dude, <laughs> super awkward. Honestly, we're all like that when the camera first hits. Yeah. But now, like, we can yeah. turn the camera on and we're like good to go. I feel like it's yeah. it's you just got to get used to it. So yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, man. Plus, it's hand really talkers good. are entertaining anyway, so yeah. probably worthwhile. Yeah, 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 yeah. People like that. Yeah. That's yeah. Very true. All right. So maybe let's uh, let's jam into your business and kind of explain what you do at this current moment yeah for sure so um i'm the founder or yeah founder chairman uh, ceo of Maripost, which is a, a tech company and we focus on um you know i'd say that the two core platforms that we have today are our marketing automation solution and then our commerce solution so yeah marketing automation gets into you know customer engagement you know single customer views of of your, your purchasers, subscribers, you know, being able to connect with them, you know, as core channels, email, push, in-app messaging, 
you know, subscriber acquisition we get into, we get into social, we, again, we get into the, the core piece, which is of course the automation side. Um, SMS, and then on SMS the commerce, there. yeah, SMS as, as Tyler has been, been focused on. Um, and then we have a commerce platform, which is um, in its earlier stages, but uh, focuses on, um, again, you know, customer acquisition, but from a, a storefront order form, uh, perspective again, a lot of um, you know reporting. I guess you could say would be would be the key aspect, and the focus that we have is really bringing the two solutions together. Right, mm -hmm. what a lot of our customers, like you guys, are doing today, um, you know, on other solutions is you know they've got an e-commerce solution, they've got an order form solution, they've got a marketing automation solution, they've got an SMS solution, and and the list kind of goes on. And it's been very much my you know kind of focus and and the company's focus to to really bring all of that together. Um, you know, and create a, a solution that we built from the ground up that can, that can handle, you know, the end to end needs of a business. All in one place. Man, your exactly. developers yeah. must be busy. Yeah, they are. They, they certainly are. Our, my co-founder and, and CTO is, is very brilliant. You know, is extremely brilliant. So, you know, relying on him in, in a lot of ways, but um, it's really going to be exciting actually, especially over the next couple of years where, you know, I think companies are, are, or customers are really focusing on, on a single relationship, maybe not a single mm -hmm. relationship, but as few relationships as possible, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, really having the right, uh, right partners as they, they start to grow. So who would you uh, say, like, what kind of customers come your way? What kind of people use your solution now? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's honestly everyone from, you know, from ev when I say every vertical is, and we have, you know, we have Car, you know, car companies like Mercedes, we have publishing companies like Rolling Stone, we have e-commerce companies like Warby Parker, we have um, digital marketing organizations like Digital Marketer as an example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really kind of every vertical and every size of customer as well. Uh, in that, when I say size being, whether that be revenue or, or personnel, like we have Fortune 500 and we have companies that have five people in them. Uh, you know, yeah. or less mm -hmm. in some cases. So, you know, I, I think where we really, you know, play a part is that relationship side of things. As I mentioned, we're, we're, you know, focused on helping our customers to actually grow their business as opposed to just being a number. And, um, you know, when, when I think of the smaller ones, a lot of the time it's, it's helping them avoid, you know, the, the trials and tribulations of having to migrate from, you know, an SMB platform to a mid market platform to an enterprise platform as they scale their business as well. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to really kind of, you know, have the right service offering to, to help people from day one to, you know, day 1000 as an example there. That's so, awesome. That's really That's cool. a, like a wide range of clientele too, man. I didn't even it realize is, Mercedes yeah. was on there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah, drive a Mercedes because of it? No, no. no fair enough. I, I love, I love Mercedes. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was <laughs> at the same time because I, I just sold both my cars since I don't drive them. So, uh, yeah. so no cars at all. No cars. Well, what if I could what? Uber in a Mercedes, that'd be great. Nice. Right? What, what did you sell? Our audience is a lot of car okay. people, so. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I had, um, so uh, back before Maripost, I actually purchased my, my dream car, which was a, an Aston Martin Vantage. Yeah. Uh, it was used, but it was just a phenomenal car. So that was a bit of a, a sad moment. That was, I think, two weeks ago when I sold that one. Uh, um, like the James and then, Bond one? Yeah, uh, the smaller version, um, yeah. and it was manual, gotcha. so it was, it was yeah. really like driving a go kart, like just a ton of fun. Rear wheel drive, yeah, like, it was the all BA. the fun, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And then I had, funny enough, I had a Range Rover uh, because we do have winter up in Canada, uh, but it was like 600 horsepower, so it was even faster than the Aston Martin. Uh, <laughs> was it an like, SVR? I, it wasn't actually. It was the the supercharged one, and then the they put some modifications oh, on it. Oh, so it was fully brought it up gotcha. from like. Yeah, it was like 500 to 600. It Crazy. Was, yeah, it was ridiculous. But then I never drive because I, I mean, I live right down, down Toronto and I'm usually going to the airport or to dinner or to the office and the office is across the street, mm -hmm. the airport I'm not parking at and, um, you know, dinner, yeah. never, never great to drive after a couple cocktails. You really That's set right. up your uh, life nicely here, hey? Just very, well, very in close proximity. Yeah, now it's a lot of unwinding. It wasn't always this simple, I guess you could say. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, um, simplifying so, my life is a key focus. <laughs> so yeah, on, on that note, can we like dive way back and kind of yeah. how you got into the spot you're in um, and how you found sure. like the tech industry and all that? Yeah. So I'm uh, just a bit of backstory. So I'm actually from a really small town in, in Ontario, Canada, uh, Timmins. It's like 40,000 people mining and forestry. Yeah. Uh, Gabe, you didn't even know where that was, which no. is kind of funny. No, but, man. Um, yeah, so it's eight hours north of Toronto. And so I, I grew up there until I was uh, about 16. And I spent my last two years of high school down in St. Catharines, which is near Niagara Falls, 
uh, for all the uh, uh, global listeners. And then, um, and then I went to Ottawa to university. So I started my career there as well. So um, while I was in university, I started working, uh, you know, just, just regular jobs that is. And, um, you know, after I think about four years of being in Ottawa, a family friend from Timmins called up and he was the VP of sales at a, a tech company that are doing um, on-site personalization actually for e-commerce companies. So this was interesting. This was 10, 11 years ago. So sort of before you had, you know, on-site product recommendations and personalization. Um, so it was really kind of neat. And, and while I was there, I was just a, a junior inside sales rep making like 25,000 base. So basically nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, I was paired up with an account executive who uh, was actually a gentleman that I knew, you know, kind of through through the Ottawa space. And he uh, he ended up getting let go, though, after a couple months and went to uh, an email service provider and uh, referenced my name there day one and just said, you know, I think this guy is young. He'd be great in like a junior sales role. And within, I think, two months of me starting there, I was making more money than the CEO was from a commission wow. standpoint. My salary wow. was about the same. Was I think it was thirty, thirty thousand. Um, but it, it was really exciting. It was a great opportunity. You know, the 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 team there. You know, with the exception of myself, and actually, I brought in one of my best friends. Nice. I actually it was it was something a little bit out of. This is going to sound so bad. But I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, out of Wolf of Wall Street, where um, I, so I had my friends going to university still, and I literally showed up at their kind of, you know, not frat house, but their, their, uh, you know, communal D- housing dorm. Yeah. Yeah. Dorm. Sorry. That's what I was looking for. Dorm with, uh, with my last paycheck and my last paycheck was like $30,000 from the month before 32,000. And I literally, there was like five of them there. And I, I, I pulled it out and I say, Hey, listen, like we're, we're hiring salespeople. We need people like now, if anybody wants a job, like this is the spot. <laughs> and he, he showed up only, he showed up. Are you for real? That's it? Just one? Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. And yeah. also there's yeah. a Wolf of Wall Street reference right behind Tyler too. That tied that's in. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's that's so, yeah. that's so it funny. reminds me of that scene where, where Donnie says, like, I quit my job and I work for you. You yeah. should be a check for $72,000. Yeah. Man, I watched so, that so, movie again recently. Yeah. It was so good. So good. Yeah. It never yeah. gets old. Anyway, sorry to it, cut you off. No, 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 no. No, it's great. Um, so anyway, he he actually still works there and he's now you know, more or less, it, they're part of like a, a $3 billion company. They were bought wow. and sold, or not, sorry, wow. they were bought. And then that company was acquired. Um, but he's actually is still there. And he's basically the CEO of that uh, vision. So he's, uh, he's doing really well. Should get That's him on awesome. the show, actually. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, no doubt, yeah. man. Yeah. Does that make you guys competitors now then? Yeah. Sort of. He's, he, they're a little more focused on, um, you know, the, the SMB market, just, just like the, the, not the MailChimp market. I don't mean it like that, but they're, they're focused on more, you know, volume customers than gotcha. uh, say Mariposa, which is more of a market enterprise. But um, so after that, actually, so I was there for a year and then, and then, as I said, that company was purchased by another company and the philosophy was vastly different. I mean, I was in the early stages of my career, so I was just, you know, literally slinging anything I could from a, <laughs> a you know, as, as, as deal or sale perspective and and they were more regimented and Ottawa is a government town so you know people follow the rules let's yeah. call it a little bit more than maybe I did in, when I was you know when I was 23 24 yeah um, but then anyway so I, I moved on to a smaller company um, and while I was there I just you know kind of decided I'm going to start my own company and or, or start a company in the space because the support that was being provided or that I had seen across the industry was just terrible. You know, a lot of the products weren't so great. Actually, that company that I was at, I, I didn't even demo the product when I would sell it. I would have to just sell it with waving my hands in the air like I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. You yeah, know, what I remember so, the first time we met, you told me if yeah. anyone told me I was going to be a business owner one day, I would have laughed at them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it was like, you said it was never your plan. Yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. And even then, I mean, oh, I think, we, and Tyler, you'd know this, but, um, my goal was never to build, you know, a larger organization. I don't think Mariposa is that large, but, um, you know, I think at the time it was maybe have 500,000 in revenue. As I was talking about earlier, I was living at the Thompson hotel, which is an apartment building in Toronto has a pool on the roof. And I was just going to kind of relax and, you know, have mm-hmm. 10 clients and really enjoy. Yeah. Um, and so needless to say, there wasn't much pool time after, you know, kind of years one or two when, when things really kind of took off. But yeah. Um, How yeah, many employees do you have now for reference? I think we're at 165 or so. Oh, okay. So, nice. Yeah. And yeah, you've so done all much. this just with money out of your own pocket, basically. 
Yeah, so we did. Um, so we've never taken any outside capital from a for for the company or from a growth perspective. Um, a couple of years ago, which this is public, you know, we sold twenty five percent of the shares. You know, for for uh, uh, in a secondary round for X amount of dollars, which which you can see online as well. Um, mm -hmm. so, but we never, yeah, we never. It's all been bootstrapped, always yeah. profitable, very much focused on that. You know, and again, even though we have, you know, I wouldn't say a large team at one hundred and sixty five, but relatively large like we really want to keep things lean and, and be this you know kind of fast growing exciting company that's profitable that never needed to take capital and you know show sort of the the industry which you know has been very focused on raising capital for the last yeah. you know for last forever or not forever but for the last while um you know that you can do things differently and you can you know really build a company with your own you know blood sweat and tears in a way in the tech space which is also very competitive yeah so, for sure that's amazing just for yeah. reference, what was uh, the last public valuation you guys had? I was 163 million US. Damn, uh, man, congratulations. Yeah. That's like a yeah. billion Thanks. dollars Canadian, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What, uh, out of curiosity, what made you want to sell part of your company? Uh, I think at the time, I mean, there was, again, the, the company was, it really revolved around me and, and my one co-founder, or my co-founder at the time, and, you know, having somebody come in and be able to help with the strategy and, and you know, with, with kind of bringing us to the mm -hmm. next stages, even though our revenue grew so quickly, you know, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be put in place for that kind of, you know, 20 or 30 million to 100 million. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was one of the focuses. I mean, it, it, in a lot of senses, it, it does make sense to take, you know, cash off the table in those examples. Oh, um, for sure. You know, so there, there was a few variables. And again, of course, wanted to do something for, for the team. Um, you know, even though we, I think back then we were at 40 or 50 people, um, but really wanting to, you know, give them something as well and, and, you know, kind of treat that as a milestone for sort of the next stages. And that's awesome. So yeah. Yeah. It was good. That's really Very cool, cool, man. You know, it always uh, intrigues me about companies that grow that like that fast is like all the changes. And I, I haven't grown that fast. So I'm always curious mm -hmm. to talk to people that have, the changes that have happened in the business to be able to scale and grow like that. Like one thing yeah. I was told is every time your company doubles, you, you pretty much have to change how things work or you're going sure, yeah. get limited. So we skipped a lot of those steps <laughs> as in, you know, we sort of went from, and this is public. So we, I mean, we went from zero to 300,000, 300,000 to 3.3 million to 13.3 million to 20 million in like 36 months. Wow. Um, so, and, and again, with the sort of the same size of team that we, you know, wouldn't say the same size, but with a, with a really small team. Um, yeah. So we skipped a lot of those stages in terms of that. And again, a lot of it was because we just didn't think about anything but growing the product and supporting our customers and, and focusing on the innovation. Um, whereas, you know, I think if you were following the more traditional approach, it's, you know, okay, we got to 5 million, we got to make these five higher, like, let's follow the textbooks or sort of. Yeah, thing. yeah. Uh, no one here had the textbook. We didn't even know there was a textbook. Uh, so it was, it was, it was really kind of, yeah, it was really interesting. So, you know, we focused a lot now on, on sort of backfilling that, um, you know, that process. Are you happy that you had no textbook and you had to figure it out or do you, is there, you got to look back? You're happy you did it the yeah. way you did? I, I think there's a couple of things that I, you know, again, hindsight being 2020, there's sure. always a couple of things that you would do differently. Like, again, maybe I would have hired a few people sooner. Maybe I would have, you know, invested in a few areas, you know, a little bit more heavily in the early stage. But, you know, when you're, when you're running at that pace and, you know, and, and effectively it's your company, you or, or you know, or the founder's company, um, you know, it, it becomes, you're treating it like your own bank account, right? Like you're not yeah. going to go make irrational decisions with your own bank account without doing that. So I think that's been both a positive, um, but at the same time, you know, I'd say a couple areas where I would have done things differently. Gotcha. Question for you. So you, you said you grew from 300,000 to 3.5 mil. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. One yeah. Year. So what, what would you associate that, that fast growth with growth with? Yeah. I, I think two areas. I mean, um, one, our, our product sort of hit, you know, sort of the masses in terms of the features functionality that we, that we, mm -hmm. you know, had launched in that, in that period or just before that, um, our customer base was, was very loyal, very excited about mm. what we were doing and, and, you know, certainly wanted to share that. So they were very, you know, very strong or very significant advocates of, of the, the company and, and of me and, and of our technology and, and team. Um, so that, that was really the, the driving force. Like it wasn't, we didn't have a sales and marketing engine. We didn't have a sales team back then. 
um, except for me. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, really focused, I guess you'd say on, on just continuing that, you know, process that we were moving forward. And that's what allowed us to, again, go from the 3.3 to 13 was we just kept doing more of that hard work that got us, um, you know, yeah. to the 3.3 in the first place. Dude, that's awesome. making sure it was consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. And you're in such a great space for like multiples and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Software company, man. That's beautiful. I know. Yeah. 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 How does it usually work just for, uh, I don't fully understand how the evaluations work. Um, so yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot honestly, of Honestly, that's like a, that's a great, it's a, it's a unique question that I don't know that anyone is really great at answering. I mean, and when I say I don't know that anyone is great at answering, I mean, you know, everyone's looking for, you know, the next unicorn. So when I, when I think of that, right, from a valuation perspective, you know, you're, you're valuing the future earnings or potential that somebody is, is able mm -hmm. to, you know, to exceed. So you know, in our case, um, and again, this was all in the press release anyway, but, you know, our, our valuation was, I think, eight or almost nine times our revenue. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you're seeing a lot with these high growth or, or fast growing, mm -hmm. you know, tech companies, certainly in the SaaS space, obviously. Um, yeah. Because it, there's, again, there's been a lot, there's, sorry, there's been enough success out there where, you know, somebody can say, hey, if we, you know, Maripost or Shopify or whoever is, is growing at, you know, X rate. And if they're able to keep that up, um, this company is going to be at a billion valuation in 12, 12 months or 24 months. And then, you know, even further beyond that, you yeah. know, in the coming, coming years. And so from an investment standpoint, I mean, it's quite logical. Um, but, you know, I think people get, or, or this goes back to my earlier point of, I wish people would work, just work a little harder is they sort of get obsessed with that philosophy, right? It's the, okay, well, we raised 5 million and now we've got to raise 10 and then 50. And then you become all about raising capital as opposed to just doing a great job for the industry or verticals, or your customers, which is the most important. And then obviously your team as well. Um, and I think those, the, the approaches, you know, both work in, in their own regard, but um, you know, again, I'd rather be in control of my own destiny than, than, you know, anyone else for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, uh, I've talked to people. Um, I think Scott Rerick was a big advocate of like, he kind of hated a lot of respects the fact that he took money early on in his career because like just yeah. the way to dictate how your business grows and what it, to do. It can be, yeah. I mean, um, it, it, you know, it can, I think it can be great and in other areas, maybe not so much. It's yeah. certainly, that's, it's a very, um, you know, I think it should be a, a very emotional decision when you're making it for the first time. Um, as in, the areas that are going to become problems are not usually, you know, logic driven as an example. Like it's going to be more, you're, you're marrying the other people and it doesn't yeah. matter if you're in series A or series G or, or you know, or whatever, that's really what you're doing. It's, it's a marriage. And so, um, so yeah, it's a, you know, it's a unique decision that every founder or not every founder, but founders have to make. And um, there's trade offs, I think for both sides. Very cool. What kind of like personal growth stuff have you kind of gone through growing the company like this? Because I'm <laughs> yeah. sure the guy you were years ago when you started is much different than the, you know, the guy we see today. Yeah. So today, vastly different, but a year ago, probably the same. And I was just talking about this last night, actually, or yesterday, where when you're moving at that pace with, remember, we were talking about the textbook, like without it, you know, without the book or without the following the process that people are where they're raising, you know, series A, B, C, D, because you learn after every one of those rounds as well. And the people who come in, help you just the same. Um, going, you know, for us, I never had the ability to take a step back. So it was kind of, I wouldn't say I didn't change at all. Obviously I did, but it was just moving so quickly that I never had that chance to take, really take a step back. And that's really what I've done over the past year is, is in, in a number of ways, um, you know, been able to look back and, and spend that time to think about, okay, like, what do, what do I, what do I want my life to look like? What do I want to look like? You know, how do I want to feel about the decisions I'm going to make or that I have made and you know, how am I really going to move forward from, from here and, you know, forward from here for, you know, my team, my customers, the company, you know, my family, my, you know, uh, partners and so on. Um, that's, it's been a really unique time, but that first five or six years, there was very little, it was just, let's go. Yeah, and, and keep doing if, if something's working let's do more of that if you know if something's not working let's make an adjustment but thankfully you know for us not we, we didn't have a lot of misses in those early stages that's awesome i actually yeah. remember i think it was last summer I, it felt like you were in ibiza for probably like three months or like some period of time and i remember texting yeah. you about yeah. like hey you ever coming it was back longer than that by the way yeah. was it how long Five were months. you there for Five yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I mean I, 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 yeah. So, keep going uh, 
I remember texting you. I'm like, man, like that's a lot of time off. And you said something about, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I remember you texting me back something along the lines of, uh, I'm teaching my team to be there without me or something like that. And that kind of got my mind thinking yeah. about like, because I always feel like there's so much I got to do day to day and actually pushing that off and making those people make the decisions for you so that things grow mm -hmm. with or without you around. Is that yeah, something that kind of changed as opposed to your earlier on years? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, th it certainly is because when you're, when you're growing a company at that level, I'm sorry, I'm just setting something on my screen here. When you're oh, growing no a company at that pace, um, you, you naturally, you know, and you've been involved in all of the areas like in finance, yeah. obviously, sorry, sales, marketing, finance, HR, development, legal. product, you know, yeah, legal, the list goes on. It's really hard to unwind that discussion, you know, sorry, that internal discussion that you're having is in, okay, I need to just hand off finance to this person and just like trust and believe that they're going to do the best job. It's really, really hard, especially, <laughs> I think it's hard in general, but it's really hard when you come from that background. Yeah. And so I, I kind of did something similar for almost two years in a row where, hmm. and, I, and I don't know if it was positive or negative necessarily. Um, I, you know, we've, we've gone through sort of two iterations of, of leadership or team building and the first one, you know, was not as was successful, not as successful. And the second one has been very successful. Um, so I think there's a combination there of giving the team the room, some room to move, not taking your eye off the ball, you know, and, and of course, I think everyone would agree to that. But, you know, there's sometimes where you, you, it's good to step back and mm -hmm. take your yeah. eye off the ball because then you're going to think about what the next stages of growth are, are going to be about for, for yourself, you know, really. And, and then again, for the company, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so I, I, I would agree, you know, that people need to do that. And, and that can be very hard, especially you're in the, when you're in those pro stages. For sure. Especially when you're in like the yeah. minute details of everything. Exactly. Yeah. I know for yeah. myself, walking away from finance would be like somewhat mm -hmm. scary. That's yeah. tough. Yeah. yeah. I how did that it was, work out for the bit or for yeah. the, like the beginning bit? Like how did it go like right out of the gate when you kind of stepped away? Uh, it was good because sorry, the first time wasn't as good. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm, just, I'm trying to remember back here. Like the, as in, sorry, nothing went wrong. Like as in yeah. no one made any bad decisions. I mean, from mm -hmm. again, the financial side of things really drives everything else. Right. As yeah. in if you're, if you're allocating budget or approving budgets for your teams, you know, you're approving that's those budgets. So, um, you know, you, you, that is again, part of letting them or giving them that room to move. And, and that's super important. Um, so I, you know, I think again, it goes back to making sure you're, you're just there to be supportive. You're comfortable with what you've allocated from a financial perspective and then allowing them to, you know, of course make amazing decisions, but potentially make some not so amazing decisions but just be comfortable that you trust those individuals to move forward and getting to that point again, as, as a, as an executive or leader is, is also quite difficult. Yeah. Um, because again, you're, you're giving up a lot. You're both, you know, providing allocations from a financial perspective and you're providing the room to move and you're becoming comfortable with mistakes. Like it's different if you make a mistake with your, your own company organization, because you're not really going anywhere, but when somebody else does it, it, the impact feels a little bit harder, even though maybe it shouldn't be. Yeah, for sure. I can relate to that big time. Yeah. Very cool, man. That's wild. Where, uh, so I know you went to Ibiza. Where else did you go when you took a break? Yeah. So last, last summer I was in Sweden, Spain and, and France for, I'd say 99% of the time. Um, I, I, I popped over to Australia for a week, uh, which was kind of crazy because it was like a 25 hour flight or two Jesus. flights, but 25 hours of actual flight time, yeah. which was actually kind of fun. Actually, I enjoy flying uh, or being in the air. Um, but that was it actually. I didn't, I didn't go anywhere else. No. Yeah, I came back to, yeah, I came back to North America after, and then I was in, yeah, traveled a bit around here, but that's it. Very cool. Um, um yeah, I don't want to go into too much detail about this cause we've talked about this earlier, <laughs> but can your, can your plane do those long travels the, to Australia? Yeah. yeah. Not Australia. No, no. I flew in commercial for that. Okay. Um, because it wouldn't, doesn't make sense anyway. Okay. Um, but it can do like uh, New York to Dubai as an example. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. It's still a pretty good yeah. haul. That's, uh, that's, yeah, it is, yeah. that's next level jet ownership. Right yeah, there. yeah. 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 <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Away. Yeah. Yeah. Moving yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not recommended. Not recommended. Yeah. Not recommended. <laughs> um, yeah. Man, that, that's really cool. So what, out of all those places, what's your, what's been your favorite so far? Definitely Spain by yeah? like a huge margin. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, no, I'm actually, you're going to laugh. I've never even touched or, or set foot on uh, mainland Spain. I've really? never been to the islands. Yeah, I've only oh, been to man. one island in particular. Um, 
yeah, there's something really magical about about uh, about Ibiza, and um, I'd never been there before actually. Um, yeah. Uh, my my CEO, he's been going there for ten years, and so he he knew how excited it would be, uh, you know, for me to go. But there's there's certainly an energy or an aura that that island has. Yeah. I've um, never, it's very I've beautiful. Never been, Highly never recommended. It's yeah. amazing. If you're gonna go yeah. to one place this year, I'd recommend it being there. That's yeah. Great. Well, oh, hopefully yeah. you're out there when I'm there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Actually, are you going to the Affiliate World Conference out in Barcelona? Uh, no, I didn't even know about that one, actually. But, um, yeah, no, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, it's in. Uh, I think it's in July. Like, really? Yeah, so I'm going to pop there, do that, yeah. and then pop to Ibiza, and then hit Italy yeah. after. So Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't know about that, but I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going in Italy? Uh, just because I think Italy would be cool to check out. I've never oh, been. Oh, no, where are you going to I've go? never been to Italy either. Oh. You're going to laugh. Like, I've really? been right up to the border. Yeah, yeah I've been to uh, Monaco. I mean, it's not on the border, but it's like 10 minutes from the border. Yeah. I've never yeah. been to Italy, though. I've been to Sardinia, which is also very beautiful if you're planning to go there. But that's an island. Uh, it's, it's sort of south of, uh, of Italy and France, if you're thinking south of France. Okay. Gotcha. I think I'm going yeah, to really uh, Adam booked it. We're going to Pastiano, I think you say it, or I probably slaughtered it. Pastiano. Pastiano, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that's much super better. Nice, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. That's nice. Yeah, so. it's super nice there. That's I think that's considered one of like the most beautiful areas in 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 Italy. Sorry, I've never been. My girlfriend's been, but um, gotcha. I certainly I, I got to get there this summer as well. Maybe I'll join you. Yeah, please do, man. I'll be out there. Romantic so. vacation for two, Tyler and Ross. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. sounds like you guys are yeah. just gonna cut laps down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well we'll, done. Just, we'll just stay well done. there. Won't come back. Yeah, yeah. If visa's yeah. that good, there's no point in coming back. Yeah, yeah. What, um, so because you guys are a platform for so many different companies, what kind of opportunities do you see in the marketplace? Like what are some of the companies that you see that are really fast movers and what are the ones that may be a bit slower, but kind of better long-term plays? From a customer perspective or from a... Just from the customer pool you have, because it is yeah. so vast. I mean, retail is always, so that's, that's a actually a really good question because having been in the space for so long, I've, I've literally seen everything. Yeah. Uh, when I say everything, you know, whether it be from a business perspective, from a, uh, an error mistake uh, perspective, sorry. Um, you know, so a, a lot of the online retail customers are usually, you know, the most progressive in terms of, um, how do I say this in terms of like feature adoption. So as in, mm -hmm. You know, for, I mean, it's common sense, right? Obviously, you're selling products online. Your your business is really going to, you know, thrive. You know, if you have a successful, you know, marketing automation sequence and abandoned mm -hmm. cart and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So there, a lot of times, they get really excited about that, and this is sort of like a, a double edged sword. They're the ones that are really going to adopt those features, you know, from a from an understanding perspective, but from an execution perspective, I think because retailers uh, or retailers and online retailers are always, you know very tight in terms of, of margins at the same time. Um, they also struggle to, to have or, or allocate the team members maybe required to accomplish those. So oh, I'll give you a good example is in when, you know, when a customer comes on board with us, you know, we, we really invest in them. Like I, I you know, in, in the past, I would personally invest time and, and energy to, to guide them down the right path and help them execute mm -hmm. on the right strategies. And now of course our, our teams do that. Um, but a lot of people still just don't allocate the right resources. So unless we, you know, make, you know, unless we literally force them, which has happened, um, <laughs> to implement certain strategies or features, you know, three to six months or, you know, or, or a year later, they may not do it because they're so, now they're so wrapped up in just executing the same strategy or, or sending the campaigns or, yeah. or launching new products and stuff like that, that they don't give it the attention that it deserves being from a revenue perspective, they could be leaving you know, a significant percentage of, of revenue on the table or, or in many cases, millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, the funny thing is, is on the other side or not the other side of the coin, but another sort of industry and, and you got, you know, Tyler, you're part of this space. That's how we met. You know, I like to call them sort of the internet marketing, digital marketing space where they're companies who are selling, you know, a lot of cases they are selling physical products, but maybe they're also selling info products. And, you know, a lot of times, a good example, this would be somebody in like the fitness space, yeah. um, you know, where they, they're selling, you know, uh, workout attire as a, as a physical product and they're, they're managing a storefront, but they're also maybe providing, you know, online training or an app mm. and courses and consult, you know, not consulting, but a, a, a conference or sessions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because there's actually a huge industry out there. And again, I don't know uh, who dominates your listeners, but when I talk to internet, you know, or online retailers, they have no idea about the space, but that space is like, they're the most, and Tyler, you guys would fall into this, like 
you're super aggressive because yeah. you've figured out and honed these strategies. And, you know, in many cases, they're, they're, or some cases they're owner operated. So you're, you're so passionate and involved with the business that you really want to, uh, you know, try everything that may, may work. And, and now I don't know where the hell I was going with this whole story. <laughs> um, I think it was the effect of you were asking what, what I'm seeing a lot of in that, that may be, you know, kind of uh, different or what people could learn from in the space. And, exactly. and so I think it's, you know, I, I'd love to see a lot of our, our customers really embrace more of that kind of internet marketing, digital marketing philosophy mm. and, and put more time and energy into, um, you know, generating the revenue that they know is there, um, you know, fr from a customer acquisition standpoint, from an, an upsell, resell, mm. uh, you know, standpoint. Um, yeah, so I, I, that may have been a really convoluted way of saying what I was trying to say, but uh, well, I, think you know, I guess what I'm alluding to is, go ahead. yeah, no, no, you go. I was going to say, one thing I've noticed just even on e-commerce alone, <laughs> like people not having an abandonment cart sequence or a follow -up. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I'm talking about, or they have one, they have one email go out, right? Or they don't have, they don't have a re retargeting campaign going. They don't have a, a subscriber abandonment campaign as well, like which yeah. is similar to a cart abandonment one, yeah. just, hey, this person has disappeared. And they really don't put a lot of that in place like even just something as simple as not having an amazing unsubscribe page right like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter you're calvin klein mercedes-benz you know tyler mm -hmm. devin and co um you are it costs you money to acquire customers it costs you money to acquire subscribers so yeah. if somebody's looking to leave you you are leaving money you know on the table and so if, if it were me i i would have the most elaborate scheme of pages and like offers and stuff like that to keep you there like get 20 percent off to, to stay you yeah know, stay with us i don't i don't know anyone who does that actually maybe two customers but really you're the only person I that's saw. like standard protocol on like drop Sounds like it, but no, yeah i kid you not no one actually does it like, groupon used to have an amazing yeah. one what's that who did, did you ever groupon? see groupons no i never did no i think there was one where they like it took you to an unsubscribe page and there's a guy sitting there and they walk up and they throw water on this dude. And they're like, we're so sorry. This guy <laughs> screwed your experience. Like, please stay with us. Yeah. And yeah. I would literally just like watch that video and I'd never unsubscribe though. Cause I'm like, I still want to like be a <laughs> part of this. Find that. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was pretty funny. Yeah, that, that's actually a good little yeah. tip that uh, I think a lot of people definitely overlook. Um, yeah. I've seen people overlook like their receipts, like obviously anything that's transactional, um, mm -hmm. that talks about the order they just made, yeah. like the open rates are so huge there. You can yeah. put a little discount coupon in there and it'll make yeah. you money. Yeah. Yeah. Auto, and people are more place. likely to look at their, their invoice or bill, like, you yeah. know what I mean? From a, yeah. a sh or shipping email, like anything yeah. like, and I mean, that's what's that. I mean, that's why everybody defaults to the Amazon conversation, right? They've done such mm -hmm. an amazing job from mm -hmm. that experience of getting you to buy more. And one thing actually that one of our clients, uh, did that Amazon does is the whole pur purchase directly from email. Um, and it's a feature we're, we're building oh, into, into our commerce application. Yeah. So when, because you receive the email from, you know, in, in the Amazon case from Amazon, or if you're a Maripost customer from Maripost, you could just click through and be in your account right from there without having to log in and like one click to purchase. So from your um, email, from your email. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that would bring you to the page. But what I mean is that the page would not put you down another oh, process gotcha. or, yeah. or path. Yeah, yeah, um, and that was interesting because we only have ever had we had one client who did it. Sorry, they built that themselves or they set it up themselves. Yeah, and as soon as I saw, it, I was like, we, we need this because it's just you know it just makes life so much easier. I mean, for the buyer Absolutely. and the experience. Yeah, yeah. always one conversions. one less step. The less steps, the yeah. better. Right? The mm -hmm. less steps, the better. That's we're doing that as a company. Maripost is literally making it easier to buy. I mean, we had a a process where we were sending out you know agreements and and somebody would have to doc you sign it back, which. Back in, I mean, way back, it was faxing it back or yeah. something like that, or scanning it back. <laughs> Think of all those steps. If somebody asked you me to bank fax, faxing back. Yeah. No, if somebody asked me to scan or fax something, now I'm like, okay, forget it. I don't need it that bad. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> Someone sent me a DocuSign the other day, and yeah. I was like, man, I forgot people still did this. Well, DocuSign's at least a little bit easier. I mean, oh, I agree. I like agree. Things, but yeah. I just, I haven't, um, I don't really sign contracts that often. So I was like, what is it? I'm, I'm yeah, always yeah. Like signing for bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're welcome yeah. <laughs> um no that's super cool man anything else like that that, that email tip is actually a really smart little tip i never yeah, even I mean, thought of that there's one one of the big again just so that that's one i mean certainly on the unsubscribe pages um uh, set it, always setting up a uh you know an, um, uh retargeting campaign for abandoned subscribers right like 
the neat thing there is you can be super aggressive, right? So just being able to trigger somebody off into a journey and say, you know, in the first email, you know, offer 5% to, to come back or to click, like you can go crazy. You can write whatever you want in the subject line because yeah. they're not opening anyway. So, um, you know, and then starting to track how much revenue you recovered from that, you know, from that journey uh, is really, really neat, right? Because you can start to see like, okay, we, you know, we brought Ross back in and then he went and, and purchased something two weeks later and attribute that to, you know, he would have been a dead subscriber if we had unsubscribed. Totally. Uh, another great feature, which is sort of the end result of that, uh, this is not a feature of Maripost, but just something people should do. Uh, sorry, it is a feature of Maripost too. But, yeah. um, you know, is, is automatically, and I say automatically, you know, cleansing out subscribers that are truly dead. So, you mm -hmm. know, if Ross hasn't opened in 60, 90, whatever days, um, you know, putting him through that, re, you know, re-engagement journey, but then saying, okay, like he's dead. We, we threw everything we could at him and he's just gone. Removing, you know, not removing, but unsubscribing him, you know, until he, he'd come back later. But making sure that's an automated process is always really smart because these days what people don't realize is that your delivery really gets impacted by your bad subscriber or your, your uh, unengaged subscribers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that, that's a really key element to, to pay attention. And that's actually those three things or sorry, sorry, three things are some of the features I was talking about or some of the strategies that we want to ensure we do ensure now that our customers implement right away. Because otherwise nice. they forget, right? They don't have time to go back and create content for their engagement strategy. They don't have time to customize a, uh, an unsubscribe page. Um, in a lot of cases, actually, with the unsubscribe page, even we'll go in there and make a couple changes. So uh, oh, wow. just so it looks cool, right? I mean, yeah, how many yeah. unsubscribe pages do you go to where it's just a white page and it just says click here to unsubscribe? You're like, Dude, well, they didn't every... put any effort into the previous relationship we had yeah. and they're not putting any effort in now. Yeah, so that's what ours looks here. like for yeah. uh, seven fig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yours it won't when you're on Maripost, so. Yeah. Ross sounds like the master of dating right now. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's the small things, right? And like putting those things together, it takes such an insignificant amount of time, but you just have to do them up front. Yeah, no, that makes sense, man. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the biggest thing is I've seen abandonment card, obviously, huge. Um, yeah. Welcome series, huge. Uh, if someone hasn't ordered it in 30 days, Actually, I found with supplement companies, like say they buy a pre-workout, um, mm -hmm. you know, trigger yeah, reorder. Yeah. yeah, reorder emails. So we we do a lot of that. That's that's a good example. I mean, there's, um, you know, there, there's really great ways. It depends on the platform somebody's using, but there's really great ways to, as you said, automatically trigger yeah. that off. And it, that that's, while different, it also reminds me of like features around uh, products that are out of stock, right? A yeah. lot of people can't really manage out of stock communications or they have to use another product to do it. To me, that's a key element because, you know, if, if, you know, Ross, Tyler, Gabe goes to the site, you know, and says, you know, put your email in here to be notified when the product is, you know, is back in stock. That's usually another tool. Um, mm -hmm. Some platforms like, like Maripost can actually do that. And, and I'm actually a huge advocate for that because otherwise I'm just going to forget that I was even looking for it in the first place yeah. Yeah. until the next time I remember that I needed that product. Mm -hmm. um, or when you're I'll driving your car or camping on your phone. Or yeah. I'll find it somewhere exactly. else and then stick with that. Yeah, person. or you find it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. You ever uh, think about doing like a conference one day where you kind of go over these best practices? For sure, yeah. I mean, I think for, for us, um, you know, conferences, it's a big commitment, right? Uh, certainly yeah. from, from, sorry, it's a big commitment in general. Um, and we want to make sure that we, you know, we have, you know, in the thousands of customers when we do that, Mm -hmm. across across both of our, our platforms um, it's not to say we're not going to do it sooner than that but um, you know that, that would be my take and, and you know I think one of the great things is there's, there's a fair amount of conferences many of them that we see each other at where yeah. a lot of our customers go to them and we're there as like the title or platinum or diamond or mm -hmm. golden or whatever, whatever <laughs> sponsor you yeah. yeah whatever you can buy and and that's actually a, you know again that's a much like more appropriate response and so what we're doing as an example we're going to internet retailer uh, ne next month or IRC mm. uh, next month and we're the some spot high level sponsor and then we're throwing a big party while we're there as well like a, a, oh, nice. a marrow post party uh, mm -hmm. separate from the conference so you know kind of packaging those together in the early stages is going to be really helpful it's not as big on the content side obviously because we're not able to share. Um, but hopefully we're doing such a good job internally with our clients that, you know, that it does get out there. Yeah, no doubt. We'll, we'll see when you send me that contract later today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually yeah. looking at more post right now for uh, some stuff we're working on. So we'll yeah. see. But um, no, that's very cool, man. Um, and I think that conference, I remember I saw you, I think it was two years ago I saw you there. Yeah. I think I, I met you that time too. I was with Tyler. 
Oh, were you? Okay, yeah, yeah you did then. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a coming back to long time ago. Yeah, Alzheimer's no. is fading. Oh. <laughs> Happens Dude, to the best of us. I, I'm like yeah. 34. I feel like I'm 60. So. <laughs> yeah, same. Like, where am I right now? Oh yeah. No, oh, yeah. Okay. Same. <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry my internet cut out for a sec but yeah that's super cool man um tell us about the future of moro post were you guys anything yeah. uh huge uh huge elephants you guys are looking to take down in the future for sure so i mean the expansion into the commerce space like that's a huge you know maneuver for us you know we're going to be coming up against you know the who's who of enterprise providers the sales forces ibms oracles you know and then the shopify's magentos of the world so, so yeah. that's really going to keep us busy we're also getting into some self-service products where we're kicking it off with a, um, a transactional tool like a SendGrid or a spark post, which is not mm -hmm. marketing related, of course, oh, but uh, yeah, still very relevant and, and relevant for us, given that we are, you know, major like an SMTP. We, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, Interesting. exactly. And we have that built into our, our marketing suites or our Meripost for marketing today, mm -hmm. uh, but selling it as a standalone where people can just sign up online and, and configure it and per, you know, purchase it mm -hmm. there. Nice. Um, that's definitely a key piece because, you know, and, and we'll continue to do that. I think as we, you know, um, you know, kind of pinpoint or develop certain areas of the application that could be standard. Because, I mean, you know, our technology, right? We have a lot of features. We have a lot of functionality. We have, we have some features that are entire companies. So yeah, um, yeah. it makes sense for us to parse that off. And then it gives people also a barrier to entry to start to work with their post in a, mm -hmm. a less significant, um, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, um, aspect. Yeah. Question. I think I, and I don't and know I if I missed. That's really a key too to our growth. Yeah. Okay. I don't know yeah. if I missed this and I apologize if I did, but are you guys making an e-commerce platform also? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay. We have. Yeah. We, we oh. have. Oh, I didn't <laughs> know that. that yeah, I, yeah. That's the second yeah. product. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So, Sorry. Did yeah, you guys already talk about this? We did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Oh, okay. I got hey, it. Welcome to the podcast, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> that was Kate. Um, yeah. Is, uh, are you kind of like, what kind of like prompted that? Was it, you know, obviously yeah. Shopify's had just insane growth. Was that kind of the inspiration yeah. for that or where did it kind of source from? It was just a natural progression actually to, to the customer relationship. And so customer relationship, the, the relationship that our customers have with their customers yeah. and, and developing the single view and, and, you know, being, you know, experts in that, you know, while we're, we're going to continue to grow, of course, on the marketing side being experts in the, the um, uh, customer engagement area, you know, really plays a role in how, of course, how you're going to market and, and retain and, and message and, and um, you know, grow your current customer base. So yeah. instead of going out and building out, you know, God knows how many integrations or partnering with so many customers, yeah. and we're still partners with them. We're still going to work with them. And the yeah. you know, people who are on marketing cloud are still going to use Magento, Shopify, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but it just made a logical sense based on the investment that you're making. I mean, and there's, mm -hmm. there's things that are, you know, that customers are always going to want that a Shopify just, they won't have, right. They're, mm -hmm. they're focused on, I don't even know how many clients they have now, but they're focused on having like a million clients. You know, yeah. our focus is going to be having tens of thousands of clients that were really entrenched and, and part of their business. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Shopify is more of the, you know, MailChimp for, you know, for e-commerce, whereas yeah. MailChimp is the, you know, the MailChimp of email. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. So, and we're, we're going to be, we're going to be situated somewhere closer to the sales forces, IBMs and so on, but with a, with a relationship that you really can't buy these days. That's super cool. I think it's gotcha. a super smart play, man. Cause I think one of the things that's missing in Shopify is like the, the centralization of all the data. Like I'd love yeah. to see a platform and maybe it does exist, but I don't even see anything that really measures <laughs> lifetime yeah. value. Yeah. No, I mean, they, they do. There's a couple of platforms that, that will share that, but then they're not, again, they're not combining that with, as we were talking about, like with the engagement data, with yeah. the acquisition data. And, and, and that's what people really want to understand. And actually even down the line, we'll, we'll probably get into the service space. So like the Zendesk, Freshdesk, you know. Oh, nice. Uh, Smart. Aspect. Because that plays a bit. An example I always like to give is, yeah. Imagine you're looking at, you know, Ross as a customer and you're in support, you're going to treat him vastly different if he spent $5,000 with you versus $50, right? Mm -hmm. This is a logical progression yeah. uh, or a logical approach. But right now, no one, you know, no customer I've ever spoken to or no, you know, no friend, uh, customer, you know, uh, client ha has anything remotely close to that, right? Where they can really kind of blend and, and bring that data in and have it, you know, used within an organization in a meaningful way. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. really going to be our, our maneuver. And like, I imagine too, like, it's been a minute since I've looked at Shopify, but you could pull in like 
you know, the, the, just the email data, like this person bought from these exactly. sequences. That's or what the we would buyers. do. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. badass, man. That's why exactly. I thought the missing link always was in Shopify. And I thought it was cool how they had those apps that you could like kind of build in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's a panel in one spot. You gapped a little bit there. Um, oh, really? At that same TNC that we met you, we bought a platform that measured lifetime value. What was that? Oh, I forget. It didn't really work though. What was that, man? That's it probably was... why. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it had to integrate with something else, has to pull all the order data. Yeah. And like it just, a lifetime value, I mean, is, is actually quite, you know, an easy calculation. You're, you're you know, defining how many customers you have by their, their value, um, you know, and then, and then thinking of that as your, your overall approach and then mm -hmm. obviously making your decisions from that. It's, I think where, where the, you know, again, where the metrics get really exciting is you start combining that with, you know, marketing budgets with new strategies that you're going to implement through Mariposa marketing. In this example, uh, you know, from, from a cost perspective and knowing that, okay, if we, if we drop in $50,000 to this strategy, it's going to spit out, you know, $5 million from a, a, a product or sales perspective. That's, oh. I think what everybody is, you know, I, I know people are doing that, but I don't think anyone's doing it very well. At least I, would, agree with you, I would love to see yeah. that. Like, I think the person yeah. that maybe does that the best or the company is like Agora. Where they'll yeah, pay you a yeah. hundred dollars for a ten dollar sale, but they know yeah. you know in twelve months yeah. they they're gonna make twelve hundred dollars from that person. Exactly. And that's that's to be honest, I mean that's that's the that edge. The, yeah, that's the edge that we're gonna have, and that's the data that our customers all want. And that's not mm -hmm. actually that sorry, I'm not saying this whole thing is not easy to pull off, but mm -hmm. uh, for for us that is. Yeah, um, but it's not as hard as it is it, you know, as it should be. That's for sure. Yeah, agreed, man. So. Very cool, dude. Man. Well, dude, thank yeah. you so much for being on this. Yeah. Any yeah. other points you want to touch on? No. I mean, if you want to find out any more about Maripost, obviously happy to chat with anybody. Come, come check us out or, or shoot me an email, Ross at Um, Certainly, if you're you're always interested in, in following uh, more of the personal life side of things, Instagram right now is the best until I get some ridiculous, you know, terrible videos of myself up onto yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but uh, you know, we're always happy to help. And, and so what's your, what's your IG? Uh, it's just Ross Andrew. Oh, okay. Easy. Yeah. Dr. I'm, Ross. I'm adding you right Dr. now. <laughs> I actually, Dr. it's funny just as a last bit, I, I accidentally filled out a form one time and put doctor in there and then I got a piece of mail that said Dr. Ross McKenna. I was like, it's kind of nice. Kind of <laughs> nice. I'm not going to lie. Kind of enjoyed it. I had a nice little moment with myself. What I took, what, what I, when I first took my now fiance to yeah. like, we, we went on a little uh, mini vacation just to Victoria from Vancouver. I, uh, yeah. at a hotel, I put my name down as doctor and she, yeah. and she thought and it when was you the, got there, did they greet you? Yeah. A hundred percent. And then she so thought nice. it was the funniest thing. I was just like, yeah. it really doesn't matter. Like yeah. it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do that from now on everywhere. Yeah. Might yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. All right, well, man. Well, well, last thing, Ross, what if, uh, what if the viewers want to join us on our adventures in Ibiza? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So reach out to Tyler. He's funding the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, tw yeah. it's a 20 K ticket to be a uh, part of yeah. the chat ride over. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it's commercial team. actually. Oh yeah. Commercial nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Me too, man. No more flying. <laughs> no more flying. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's great. You get served. You just re recline in those. Yeah. You sleep anyway. Honestly, I sleep yeah. the whole time. Like that's pretty much yeah. all I do. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. The only advantage yeah. is you get to bring you on your own Chick-fil-A. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, thank awesome. you everyone for listening today for everyone watching, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel, uh, our YouTube channel for that being said. Uh, and everyone listening, please give us a five star on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher. Tell your friends. We will be here. That's right. Thanks, right. guys. Later. Have Thanks a good everyone. one. Bye.